Hello, my creative friends, and welcome to another episode of The Daily Prompt. My name is Jeff. I'm here to help you and inspire you and encourage you to take action and follow through on your dreams and your goals and your visions, not because I want you to feel good about it, but because I want to make stuff. <laughs> I need writers in order to write stuff that we can actually say yes to that we can go out and make. Now, today in this episode, I wanted to, I wanted to address this old piece of Hollywood lore that William Goldman, a famed screenwriter and playwright and novelist, uh, he wrote, he's most famous probably for The Princess Bride and Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. He wrote a book called uh, Adventures in the Screen Trade, which is all about screenwriting and his take on all that stuff. He has a very famous line, a very famous quote that basically says, nobody knows anything. <laughs> now, Here's the problem with that line. I agree completely, 100% with his idea and the intention behind what he said with that line. The problem is taken out of context or the nuance of that line getting misunderstood as it does very often can lead to precisely the wrong idea, can lead to almost an anti-intellect reactionary uh, excuses based approach to what you do William Goldman was uh, uh, William Goldman was a was the screenwriter's screenwriter he was an extraordinary creative talent he he was very original in what he created and he was speaking about this idea of the feedback that you get and the notes that you get and how everyone thinks and everyone says that if you do it this way, we're going to get better results than if you do it that way. And the idea that nobody knows anything being a counterpoint to that is 100% correct. If I'm a producer and I read your script and I say, okay, this, uh, this whole part of the story doesn't really work and we have to change this. We have to add a new love interest character. We have to add this sort of element. We got to change this all around. Those are my opinions. Those are my notes to you. Those are, that's my perspective based upon my experience and my creative sensibilities and what I might think or want. And at the end of the day, if I tell you that we have to do that in order for your project to be successful, how could I possibly know that? I might be able to pinpoint why I think things are going to be ineffective. I might pinpoint why I think we can make things stronger, but ultimately a creative piece of writing, a creative work, a piece of fiction or anything that you create and bring into the world, there is no right or wrong with that. And that's really what nobody knows anything is trying to say. Nobody knows if your project will be successful. All we can say is, here's what I think needs to happen to make that more successful. Now, the point is this. When William Goldman talks about nobody knows anything, what he's really trying to say is you have to follow your creative instincts. You have to follow your true your sense of true north, your sense of what what you want to do and where you believe you need to go. There's a whole industry out there of screenwriting education, which is focused on you have to do it this way, or these elements right here are what lead to the extraordinary result. Follow this, these X number of uh, steps through this process or the hero's journey model. Everything has to fit within this context or the three act structure. Everything has to be shoehorned into this model. Why? It has to be shoehorned into that model because people have analyzed past projects and said, well, these are the dynamics that made that project work. But that doesn't mean that's the only way to tell a story. That doesn't mean that's the only way you can express your creativity or we can get across the message or the meaning or the emotion that we're trying to get across to the audience. We need to keep our creativity open. We need to keep our, our minds free to go in directions that have not yet been tapped into, that have not yet been created. Now, here's the thing. Nobody knows anything does not mean that all that stuff is wrong. The reality is that nobody knows anything's a very catchy little line, but ultimately a lot of people know a lot of stuff. 
Now, that doesn't mean they're right, and it certainly doesn't mean they have dominion over your creativity or the choices that you make with your project. That's all you. That's up to you. You have to be the one spearheading your own creative pursuits. But ultimately, if you're going to get your project made by a producer or a production company, if their thinking is very rigid and they're not able to see the vision that you have, now it could be that they don't know anything, that nobody knows anything. Or it could be that you don't really know how to convey that effectively, which means nobody knows anything. So ultimately, if you use nobody knows anything, as an excuse, as an anti-intellect rationale for not learning, for not understanding dynamics at play, for not understanding how character building works, how story building works, how the process itself of going from idea to story to screenplay to the sale. If you use nobody knows anything as a way to avoid that kind of work, simply instead saying, well, whatever comes out of my head is going to be magically wonderful and at least every bit as viable or possible as everything else that's out there. That is fundamentally demonstrably false. We can prove that that's not true. Now, here's the way I like to put it. I kind of shift the whole framing of this idea. What I like to say instead is that there is no such thing as right or wrong. There is only effective or ineffective. Now, I know I've said this on this channel previously, but <laughs> there's a lot here, so people don't always find it. If you say there is a right way to tell a story. That is fundamentally wrong. That's incorrect. There is no right way to tell a story. There are simply story choices that you're going to make. So if you, if you judge your own work from the sense of, oh, this sucks, or oh, this is brilliant, I think this is fantastic, you're judging the work. You're making an assessment of the end result. You're saying something is the right way to do it or the wrong way to do it. If you get notes or feedback on your project and the notes disagree with what you're intending and you're thinking, this person's an idiot, their notes aren't right or wrong. Their notes are simply to whether your project is effective in their from their perspective or not. If you shift the perception from right and wrong to effective or ineffective, then we can look at the notes themselves. We can look at the script itself. We can look at the industry pursuit itself. And we can say, is this effective or ineffective? And if it's ineffective, we can go in and we can try to make it more effective. If it's already effective, we can stick by those ideas or those pursuits. So if you're creating something, if you're writing a screenplay and you want to make it the best it can possibly be, don't think that there is a right way to do this. There's not. You can completely, completely, 100% obliterate the three-act structure and still have a powerful, effective, engaging, emotional, audience-connecting story. It has been done many, many times. So that structure isn't right. That structure is only effective or ineffective. For certain kinds of stories, that is a fantastically effective way to do it. For other kinds of stories, that's an incredibly ineffective way to do it. So if you use this, if you use this framework, you, you think through your decisions or the response to your decisions or where you want to go next in your career from that vantage point, it doesn't become about what choices are the right choices to make. It doesn't, it doesn't, it's not about whether I should take this idea, if this is the right idea to focus on writing a screenplay about, or whether this is the right person to listen to. It focuses, it, it changes the dynamic into, is this an effective story idea? Is this going to, is this going to be the most effective way to express what I'm trying to say? Is this person that I'm listening to, me for example, is what this person is saying going to be more or less effective in helping me get where I'm trying to go than some other person somewhere? 
I don't believe in putting anyone in a box. I don't believe in being rigid about it because intrinsically, fundamentally, and again, I've said this many times, every single human being has a unique window on our world. How could there be one size that fits all of that? There's seven plus billion people on the planet at the moment. That's a lot of unique windows on the world. How can every single one of them fit into the same narrow little box? And that, I believe, is the true spirit of nobody knows anything. Because if you say nobody knows anything, well, the reality is what I know is true for me. What you know is true based on your experience. The question is, can you learn to broaden your experience from what I share with you or what I tell you or the feedback that I give you? If yes, continue to listen and let's move forward and make both of our worlds wider and bigger and better and stronger. If no, if it's gonna box us into some limited, narrow, shrinking framework, well, that's going to be vastly ineffective in the long run. So the point is simply this. If, <laughs> if you love the quote, nobody knows anything, as I do, make sure you love it for the right reasons. Make sure you don't simply love it as a crutch or an excuse. Screenwriting, as an example, has literally hundreds of unique skills that writers need to master along the way. Skills, there are simple things like character building and how to, how to design scenes and how to, how to build the world itself and how to weave nuance and, and subtlety and tension and pacing and subtext and all this, all this stuff into your work, all the sort of obvious stuff. But there's also things like creative confidence and originality and the ability to persist and the strategy for overcoming procrastination, all of these specific skills, the ability to pitch projects and the ability to speak confidently to people when you're putting yourself out there on, on, a, on a limb, right? Like there are so many aspects to it. Yeah, a lot of people know a lot of things. If you say nobody knows anything, you can very easily close yourself off to the things you literally need to learn. If you open your mind to, well, a lot of people know a lot of things, but nobody knows the right way for me because there is no right way. Ultimately, what's the most effective way? That's why my approach is all about the process. I never tell people what to write. I never tell people what to put where on which page. Every step in my system, there's no right or wrong. It's all subjective. You decide when you've successfully completed it. You decide when you haven't completed it, but I'm moving forward anyway. You decide because ultimately it's not about me telling you what's right or wrong. I'm not your guru. I'm not your boss. I'm not your leader. I am here to help you on your journey, find what's right for you. Nobody knows anything, I beg to differ. I've learned a lot along the way. And if you reject what I have to say or what I have to offer or what anyone who has spent a lot of time with this stuff uh, knows or has to offer or has experienced, if you reject it all out of hand, well, then you're probably not making the most effective choice in getting yourself where you'd like to go. So. Nobody knows anything is accurate if you simply use it in the right context. And that is you know you. You know what you're trying to achieve. And if you don't, by the way, set up step one has exactly shows you exactly how to do it, how to get there. So ultimately, don't listen to naysayers. Don't listen to anyone who tells you you suck or you can't do it. Don't listen to anyone who tells you that there is a right or wrong in any aspect of any detail of any of this stuff, including you. Don't listen to yourself if you're limiting your, your, your view on these things by using the wrong language. Switch it to effective or ineffective. I'm ineffective at writing. How do I make myself more effective? You learn some of these techniques that a lot of people know a lot about. How do I move through this process? You go step by step. You keep taking action and moving forward. And that's really ultimately the key is listen to the people who can help you be more effective and shut out the people who are going to box you in and make you less effective. If you do that and you continuously try to make yourself more and more effective, you're going to iterate 
you're going to get where you're trying to go. So <laughs> take this for what it is. Understand what I'm saying. If you have any questions or comments or you want to give me any feedback, please pop it in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe and click the little bell icon for uh, getting notifications of upcoming videos on this channel. We're trying to do it semi-regularly. We'll see how we go. Uh, but whatever you do, take action every single day. Take action today. You can do this. There's unlimited opportunity available to us. So take action right now. We'll see you in the next episode. Oh,